Okay, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our user console for supervisors webinar. The session should last approximately 15 minutes with time for questions at the end. Please ask any questions via the chat on the meeting, um, and then we'll answer those questions at the end. Any questions not answered, uh, we will put on the frequently asked questions section of the webinar website. So today we're going to be having a look at the user console. And as a supervisor, there's lots of useful information available through the user console on a real time basis. So during the session today, we're going to be having a look at the information that you can get from the calls list. We're going to look at the user list, the group management aspect through the user console, and the menu options, including changing your settings. To access the user console, you can either go via the single sign-on window, which will give you your uh, usual access, and you can access the user console from the right-hand side via those boxes. Or if you're already logged into another console, if you use the menu just next to your initials, you'll be able to navigate directly to any of the other consoles that you have available. Once in the user console, the usual setup would be to have your calls here on the left hand side and then all the users over on the right hand side. You've also got all the statistics boxes across the bottom of the screen and we'll have a look at those when we'll have a look at the menu section. The calls are um, all have icons to tell you exactly what's happening during that call. So at the top call here, we actually have an outbound call which is denoted by the phone and the little outbound arrow. Inbound call. We have a video call that's been answered, so that shows in green. Whereas a video call that's been missed will show in black. An inbound call answered will show as green, whereas call missed will show as red. You'll also be able to access the call recordings through the calls list. Any call recording for a call, remember, is audio only, so it doesn't record any video at the moment. There are some extra icons that you will see down this column as well. So we also have the envelope for voicemail messages. If you see a queue, that means that queue buster was activated and that particular patient requested a queue buster callback during the queue. If you've made an outbound call that's not answered, you'll see a red phone with a strike through it. And an abandoned call will just show as a black phone. We're going to look at the difference between missed and abandoned uh, when we look at the statistics boxes. You can also see the duration of the call on the screen. And if you hover over it, it will tell you how long that person was in pre-talk. And pre-talk time includes any queuing time that that patient's gone through. Obviously, we're looking at the training database here. So our pre-talk times are fairly low because we answer our calls quite quickly whilst we're in training with you guys. You'll also be able to see how long uh, that particular call took with the talk time here showing on the screen as well. Now these durations are all exactly the same length but if you look at the dark patches within the duration that's the actual call uh, either pre-talk in the red or talk in the green or blue depending on whether it was an inbound call or an outbound call. At the top of the screen here we've got our recent and archive calls button so to switch to calls that are older than 24 hours on our recent calls, I can use the archive call button. That will then bring up a search facility so that I can put in the date range that I want to have a look at. Just by clicking on the date range, we'll then give you options. So we can look at today's calls, we can look at yesterday's calls, last seven days, 30 days, a month or last month. Or you can use the custom range, which is what I'm using here. So I've selected my dates from the 5th to the 12th of May. I could also add in times here so that if I knew the call happened um, at around 10 o'clock, I could start my search just before 10 and end it at 11. So that I've only got a few calls coming up in that particular search.
once I have the range in that I'm looking for, just click on apply and that will then sort the call. So I now only have that particular range. I can also add filters to the calls by clicking on the filter icon so that I could see just inbound calls or just outbound, internal or external, answered, missed or no answer, abandoned calls or any calls where they've left a message on voicemail. I can also search using the icons at the top of the calls list here by clicking on the magnifying glass. That will then bring up a search box for me where I can input either a name or a number depending on whether that name, uh, the name is within the directory. If I enter a number here, it will then reduce the number of calls that I have that match the criteria between the 5th and the 12th and also include that mobile number. And you can see all the calls listed here. I can then export that data using the export button at the bottom of the calls list here. That will export into a CSV file, which you can then open using any um, spreadsheet viewer that you need to use. If we then move over to the user list, we can see all our users here. And on my screen, I usually have them split up into the groups of the types of calls that they take. If I hover over someone's name, it will show me as a supervisor how long they've been in that particular state. So I can see that Donna has been available for a call here for the last 23 minutes. I can see Joe is in Do Not Disturb and I can change the state of Joe if I know that actually she should be available uh, to receive calls and I can see her at her desk. If I click on Joe's name, it will open Joe's contact details. I can see that she's in Do Not Disturb status and as a supervisor, I can change that status so I could move her back into available if I needed to. That will then change Joe on the user list and if there are calls queuing, those calls will now start coming into her straight away. If Joe wasn't going to be taking appointments calls for a while um, and I needed her to focus on the other types of calls that she takes or indeed to do admin and not be taking any calls at all, I can change the group that Joe is in without having to, need, uh, to visit either the configuration console or the service delivery console just by clicking on Joe's name. And I then have the groups that she takes calls for. So if I want to remove her from that appointments group, I can merely click on the appointments. And when I close that, it will remove her from that team temporarily. So in the background, she's still in that team, but the system is no longer looking for her to take a call on behalf of appointments. If I want to put her back into the team, I can either click where I can see Joe's name in one of the other groups, or I could use the search function at the top and actually search for the user so that I can just see Joe. If I want to put it back into the appointments queue, into the team, I can click on appointments and that will then pop her back into that team. So the system will now start looking at her again so that she can take calls. Finally, we're gonna have a look at the menu section, which is just next to your initials up at the top and it's the three lines here. If I click onto the menu, that will then open the options that I have. So remember, I can go straight to any other console that I have access to. So if I needed to go to the support portal from here to uh, log an issue, I could do that from here straight away. I can also go into the service delivery console or directly into my reports console from here. We're gonna be having a look at the settings section at the moment though, so that we can change the setup of the screen and the information that you can see on there. So when I click onto settings, that will then open up the settings menu. And we have our appearance, stats boxes, calendars, soft phone, and then we have the other tab. On the appearance tab, I can change how the screen is displayed. Um, so whether it's a full screen view, this compact view is how the calls appear within the calls list and compact will give you a, a line if you change that, the other one is a story and it actually tells you what happened to that call from beginning to end. But compact is an easier view to see the calls on the screen. I could also change the number of calls that I have on the page. Uh, so it's defaults at 15, which you, usually works for a small monitor. You can see with my screen though, I do have a bit of extra room at the bottom of the screen. So I could increase the number of calls per page 
to maybe 20, which will then fill the screen for me. I can increase that as much as I want, and there'll then be a scroll bar on the calls that I can scroll down if I need to. You don't really need to change the icon pack. That will just make uh, sure that the icons that you can see are the ones that you need to see via Surgery Connect. The grouped agents list would change uh, how your users are displayed. So if I take them away from being grouped, it will just list all the agents alphabetically um, and show whether they're logged in by being light gray or logged out in dark gray. I can also change how the active calls are shown on my calls list. So normally um, it would show the full line in the particular color. So green for inbound calls and blue for outbound calls and red for calls that are queuing. You can actually change that so that it shows the call in white, even though it's an ongoing call. Um, and then the color will just be shown in the duration to show you whether it was an inbound or an outbound call. I can also change the layout of my screen, which I find especially useful. Um, so rather than the two third, one third splits, I could change it to a 50 50 split here. And then my screen will show half and half with my calls and my contacts over on the right hand side. Within the statistics boxes, I can turn on or off individual boxes here. Or if I'm not interested in them at all, I can click show panel at the top and it will remove all of the boxes from the bottom. However, for a supervisor, these statistics boxes can give you really useful information. So it's going to tell you how many people you actually have logged on and available um, to receive calls. You can actually click on that box as well and it will filter all of your users. So it only shows the users that are then logged in to Surgery Connect. If you click on available users again, it would then show your logged out users as it would do normally. You'll also see how many people that you've got currently ringing into the queue, how many people are currently in the queue and how long the longest person has been waiting. You'll then get some call summary so you can see all of your inbound calls. So it'll be a total of the calls that you've had in. You've then got the total of calls answered. You can also see your missed calls on the statistics boxes. So missed calls, remember, are calls that have gone through your uh, call system and they've gone into the queue at least and possibly about to be delivered to um, a receptionist in order to answer that call. The, the patient has then put the phone down during that queue and that is a missed call. You can also see your abandoned calls. Um, abandoned calls are slightly different than missed calls. So they are when the patient has rung up, heard it's the surgery and then put the phone down. You'll find that you may have quite a few abandoned calls um, just before you open, where patients are trying to get through the call queuing system before the call lines actually open, usually at eight o'clock in the morning. So you might see quite a few abandoned calls just before eight, where people are trying to get into the call queuing system before it's opened there. You can also see what your average talk time is, so how long it takes on average to deal with a call. Um, and then you can see what calls have been queuing for under a minute, between a minute and five minutes, five minutes and 10 minutes, or over 10 minutes if your queues are particularly long. You can also see how many outbound calls you've made, as well as how long the average queue was during the last hour. Your standard queue obviously is your physical queue that people will be queuing in and that will tell you how long the longest person has been queuing currently in the standard queue. If you have queue buster activated, then there's another two boxes that you may want to use, which is how many people you've got in your queue buster queue. And also how long the longest person has waited in that queue buster queue. So with the statistics box, st excuse me. So with the st statistics boxes on the screen, you can see a lot of real-time information, um, and it will help you manage what's going on within the practice. Our next option is our calendars. I can add in any of the calendars that I've got here for the practice. So I've either got my main calendar, which is controlling the opening and closing uh, of the phone line. I've got my prescriptions department calendar, which is controlling the opening and uh, closing times of that particular department, as is my test results. So the only one really that's going to affect the inbound calls is our main calendar. So if I add that onto my user console, just by clicking on the radio button here so that it goes green, that will then appear at the top of the user console, just next to our Surgery Connect logo. 
I can then access my calendar directly from the user console, man, uh, net, uh, excuse me, directly from the user console by clicking on where it says open on the calendar. That will then ask me what I want to do. So I can either go and view the calendar and add an event to the calendar if I need to add on training maybe, or I can turn off automatic and just make it to go into a particular event straight away. So I could go into there and turn on the emergency message if there was a problem at the practice and we needed to evacuate. If I click on the emergency, that will then ask me what type of override I would like to enable. So I'm going to go for a permanent override, which will then be on until I turn it off. And that will change my main calendar looking at next to the um, icon here for Surgery Connect. So I'm now on the emergency situation rather than the standard open. If I then want to change that, I can click onto the emergency situation and turn on auto, and that will then put the calendar into what the schedule should be normally at that time of day. So if we turn on auto, that turns the calendar back on to its automatic function. If we then move on to the other tab, um, we know that we need to change our session idle timeout from the default 30 minutes up to 10 hours so that this web page will sit in the background all day um, and you won't need to log in every time you come back to it. You can also um, amend the agent, the, sorry, the view of the agents that you can see through the user list here. So I could permanently have all my logged out agents not showing on the screen. So it will only show me people that are actually logged in. Showing the caller name and dialed name is for your calls list. Uh, that will swap the numbers to names if we know the name. So if it's your main number that's making the call out or a particular group, it will put that name into uh, the boxes on the dialed or the dialed number. You can also click off the shirt, a phone dialer here. Uh, that will just remove this little icon up at the top. Um, which actually makes it easier to find the dialer on your screen. So I re recommend leaving that one on. And then our final one on our other tab is the call debug. And at the moment that is hidden and it's hidden as a default. But with the call debug, if you have any problems with the quality of the calls uh, via Surgery Connect, if you show the call debug by switching that one off, you'll actually next to each call get a little icon. And if you hover over the icon, it will show you the ID of that particular call. If I then click on the ID, I can copy the ID so that I can then put it into my support ticket when I'm raising the issue with the support team. However, I can raise a support ticket directly from this screen just by clicking on the little question mark. So if I had a, a problem on a particular call and I'm going to need um, the Exxon team to help, then I can raise the support ticket by clicking on the little question mark here. It will take over the call ID straight away for you to make it easier. You can then put in a description of what the issue was and set the category and then create the ticket. That will then create a ticket through the support portal, which is actually going to be the topic of our next webinar in two weeks time. So during this session, we've had a look at the calls list via the user console and the information that you can view there. We've also looked at the user list, group management, via the user list and looking through the menus, including the settings there.